Hello, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about our paper to ICASP 2021. The name is a two-stage approach to device-robust acoustic scene classification. I'm Hu Hu from Georgia Tech. So at the beginning, let's go through the overview of this presentation. I will give the introduction at first about the program definition and the background information. Then I'm going to talk about our proposed two-stage system. It mainly includes three parts the two-stage classification procedure, the CN classifiers, and the data mutation strategies. Then I'm going to talk about our experiments, including the experimental setup, the overall results, and the evaluation of different data mutation strategies. In the next, I will present some results from the neural salience analysis, and finally, I will give the conclusions. So let's move on. In this work, we focus on the acoustic scene classification, the ASC task. This task is to identify the real world sounds into environmental classes, such as the metro station, street traffic, or public square. Nowadays, the state of the art ASC systems are built by CN based end to end system. That means that for each input feature, it will be fed into the CN classifier and then get the output prediction of the scene class. As for the ASA system, the device robustness is a critical issue. Usually in real world application, our ASA system should be robust enough to different recording devices. And in Decades 2020, Task 1A mainly focus on the device robustness problem of the ASA system. In this work, to leverage the device robustness issue, we propose a novel two-stage ASA system. Then let's move on. The two-stage classification procedure is the main part of our proposed ASC system. As shown in the red figure, it consists of, of two CN classifiers, a three-class classifier, and a 10-class classifier. The three-class classifiers, it classifies the input audio into one of three broader classes, the indoor, outdoor, and the transportation. This three class is from our prior knowledge that the same classes can be roughly grouped into these three general classes. We expect it to enhance the classification process of the 10 class classifier. And the 10 class classifier is the main classifier. It classifies the input audio into one of the one of 10 target scene classes. The final decision is made from the score fusion of these two classifiers by this equation. So you can see here the F1 is the three class classifier output and F2 is the 10 class Class, classifier output. For example, as a uh, bar scene, for example, it belongs to the transportation class. So as for an input audio, the, pro the probability to be from the bus is equal to the product of the probability of the bus and the probability of the transportation. Uh, besides the two-stage classification procedure, we also investigated three different CN models including a reset model, the residual network, a FCN model, the fully convolutional network, and a FSFCN model, a frequency subsampling convolutional network. Also, we investigated the line different data mutation strategies. They can be grouped into two types. One is low generating extra data, including the mix up, random cropping, and the spectral augment. The other type is generating extra data, including spectral correction, reverberation with the DRC. DRC is a dynamic range compression, the pitch shift and the speech change, random noise and the mixed audios. So please refer to our paper or code base for more details about these data mutation strategies. Then let's move to our experiment, experiments part. At first, the experimental setup the data set we used is the Decades 2020 Task 1A data set. It uh, includes almost uh, 14K training clips. Each clip is 10 seconds, and they are recorded by six different devices. Among them, device A accounts for almost uh, 75 of all the training data, and device B, C, S1 to S3 accounts for 5% respectively. As for the test set, Audios are recorded from nine different test devices. We divide them into four subgroups. So it's real source devices, the device A, real target devices, the device B and C, the simulated sync, sync devices, device S1 to S3, 
the simulated INC devices, device S4 to S6. Here, the device S4 to S6 is only seen in the test set, so it uh, can be regarded as an unseen test set to our task. As for data processing, we used the 128 dimension log mail filter bank features, and we scaled each future map into between zero and one. This is a trick and it's not a, a usual way for audio processing, but we found it uh, helpful to boost the final result. Then let's say our experimental results. At first, the first table is the three class classification results. We can say that our models can easily get good performance over 90% accuracy. And the ensemble, ensemble of these models achieves the best result. Then we can present the then we also present the comparison of different documentation strategies among our light documentation strategies mixed up and random cropping are always used. And from the results, we can say that each data documentation way we use in our system can improve the performance and the bring gains on all different types of devices. Then let's look at our overall results. The second to six lines are results from our CN model. We can say that the CN classifiers show good robustness on different test devices, and the ensemble of these three models can further boost the performance. So if we look at the results from our proposed two-stage system, the last four rows, the last four rows are two-stage systems shown in the table one. So if we compare them with the original one, one by one, for example, we compare the two-stage reset with reset, the only difference is that we in introduce the two-stage procedure into the reset. So we can find that the two-stage can boost the performance a lot if we compare the, the average accuracy, the overall accuracy. So a uh, 2.5 to 3.2 absolute accuracy can be obtained in different models. And if we look at the difference between devices, we can find that uh, two stage can somehow leverage the difference, the gap between, between, the different, between different devices. So for example, our best, our best system, the two stage ensemble, it can leverage the gap between thin and unseen data a lot. So if we compare these two columns, so you can say in baseline and other CN models, the gap between this thing and the uh, unseen test set is very large, but in our best two-stage ensemble, the gap between thing and the uh, unseen test set is uh, very small. So that's the results on different devices that we can argue that it can confirm the effectiveness of our proposed two-stage system to improve the device robustness. So then I will talk uh, about our results by neural saliency analysis. In this work, we use CAM to gain a better understanding about what sound patterns are found by our CN models. To be specific, CAM can highlight the class-specific discriminative regions in the input future map. In our case, an audio clip is transformed into a time frequency representation and the CAM can review where the ASA decision is triggered by CN models. That is to say which part of the input audio clip has a meaningful semantic content with respect to the target scene class. So this is an example from the metro station scene. The brick and the hall sound starts from zero and to around eight, eight seconds. And after five seconds, only reverberation remains. So from the CAM results, we can see that our, our CN models, they does focus more on this, uh, on this part from zero to five seconds. And uh, indeed, the, this break and the whole sound is helpful to, to decide it is from the battery station. So also, uh, also we can see that our CN models, it can, the two stage, it can further boost the, boost the confidence of the final decision in terms of the probability. This is a, another example from the bus scene. So the, the brick sound starts from around eight to from two seconds and stops at around five seconds. 
and ORC model it does focus more on the on this on this part because this part can help the help help to identify this is from the bus. So in general, from those results, we can say that ORC models does focus on some acoustic events that has discriminative information. So specifically, C models pay more attention to acoustic segments that are containing some specific acoustic events, such as a bird sounds for the park, or cars horn sound from the street traffic, or brake sound from the bus. Okay, finally, let me give the conclusions of our work. In this work, we proposed a novel two-stage ASA system to leverage the device robustness issue of ASA tasks. We also investigated three different CA models and lie different data augmentation methods. So, and, and our experiments on Decades 2020 dataset show the effectiveness of our proposed approach. Our best system, a two-stage fusion of a CN-based ensemble, obtains a state-of-the-art 81.9% percent per, accuracy. And we also perform the CAM-based neural saliency analysis. By using that, we demonstrate that the same models pay more attention to acoustic events to make the final decision. And that's all. Thank you very much for watching this video.